Ota King Seminar Special Edition. This lecture will prepare you to watch Porco Rosso on TV tonight and tweet some cool trivia about the movie. Then people will think you are an enthusiastic Porco Rosso fan. Well, some of you might think my viewpoints are rather twisted than trivial, but they will definitely add up to your enjoyment when you see the show tonight. You don't need to hear them, but you will enjoy the film more if you do. Miyazaki's animes are full of these hidden trivia, so I'll introduce you to some for Porco Rosso. The lecture will take about 20 to 25 minutes. At the end of the lecture, I'll talk about this major crisis at the climax that strikes Porco that's caused by his relationship with Theo. So please stay with me until the end. So, the first point, I'll refer to the minute based on the DVD, not the ones on the TV broadcast. It's three minutes in the DVD. It's Porco's hideout. There you see Porco in the cockpit starting the engine. And here, when he starts the engine, the large propellers are already spinning. Then when he sits right here, do you see this tiny one? This starts spinning slowly. It starts spinning afterwards because it receives air from the large front propeller. There is a different function for this. It's a small wind turbine. Let me explain. This comes out in the original manga of Porco Rosso that Miyazaki drew prior to the movie. The same depiction of this feature of his plane is in the manga. There are large engines on top of the wings. However, the gasoline tank is installed right in front of Porco, which means he has to pump up the gasoline to generate the engine. But, of course, an electric pump was rare back then, so they needed to come up with an alternative. That's how they came up with this wind turbine. There will always be wind thanks to the propeller in the front. The turbine can receive the wind and pump the gasoline up to the engines. The system is quite complicated, not easy to handle. Think of Italian cars. Think of how those cars look fashionable, but also flimsy. The wind turbine is like them. Porco bitches about how it breaks so easily, but I think he actually likes the Italian quality. Some of you may have thought, no, the turbine is an airspeed indicator. If you think they are though, I'd say you are airplane geeks. I love talking about airplanes, so I'll talk about why you airplane geeks may confuse the wind turbine with an airspeed indicator in the main broadcast this Sunday. Next, the battle with Mama Yuto Gang. So, according to the DVD, it's after six minutes. It's an extremely short scene. You first see Porco passing in front of Mama Yuto plane. This is a still shot. These are the streaks that are left in the air after the plane passes. It's a dynamic effect that you can paint by swiftly running a brush on top of a cell. I haven't seen many effects like this one in anime. It's an impressive scene. The image of Porco's plane passing by the enemy plane looks cool. And I think that's because of these streaks, dynamically colored in red, white, and green. So, I don't know the right word, maybe manga-ish? I see this effect more in manga than anime. It stands out because this is the only scene in the film with such dramatized expression. At six minutes or six and a half, it disappears quickly, so look carefully. It'll surprise you. The battle between Porco and the Mama Yuto gang, I don't have the image of it, but when you watch the film on TV, count the number of his machine gun shots. He uses eight shots to destroy the first engine, then 12 shots to shoot off the tail. There's a reason for this. Porco doesn't shoot the machine gun to kill. He has loaded only 20 bullets in the two machine guns. Porco comments that if he loads more than 20 bullets, the battle will turn into a war. So, after this, 
Porco's plane approaches the enemy plane and the boss of the gang comes out. He yells, come on you pig. But at this point, Porco's plane has no more bullets loaded in the machine guns. He's making a big bluff. Porco is confident that by shooting off the engine and the tail, he can make the Mamayuto gang surrender. So, he doesn't use all 20 bullets randomly. With no bullets, he flies straight into the enemy, but the subordinates of the gang hold him back and wave the flag saying, We'll surrender! But then, why did he take such risk? He could have been killed for having only 20 bullets. He surely is reckless, but it's going to be a long story to explain why he is. So please wait until I talk about it on Sunday. Next, about nine minutes and a half have passed on DVD. At Hotel Adriano, Madame Gina is singing. She's singing a song in French. The French song that she's singing is called Le Temps de Cerise, or The Time of Cherries. And Gina's lip movements completely match the lyrics. It's a method called lip sync. Very old Disney movies used to use this method in Japan. Akira is famous for using lip sync as well. To use this method, the acting precedes the animation drawings, so the drawings of the lips can match the voice. Akira did this differently where, instead of showing the real actors, they just took vowels from the script and noted it on the storyboard. The animators drew the shapes of the characters' mouths based on the storyboard. That directed how to open or close the mouths. That's why when you watch Akira, you can see the Japanese lines perfectly matching the lips of the characters. The scene with Gina is kind of like that. Actually, even better, because this one took it a step further. They did a location shooting at this Russian food restaurant in Aoyama. Or maybe it was Indian, I'm not completely sure. Anyway, they invited singer Tokiko Kato there, and videotaped her singing there. Then they did the lip syncing. This photo was taken during that recording. This one. Look how happy Miyazaki seems. Extremely happy looking Miyazaki finally meeting Kato, his long-standing aspiration. Now, Kato was invited just to sing the song. Two featured songs, one for the end credits, and that was supposed to be it. But Miyazaki fell in love with her overwhelming performance, so he gave her the role of Gina. Speaking of Tokiko Kato, she's one amazingly unique woman. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to talk about her in another lecture. Next, 40 minutes have passed on DVD. Porco's in Milano. He's having his broken airplane fixed. Somehow, Porco meets Fio in a town. And Fio gives Porco a ride with her truck. You see the company name right here, Fiat. Same brand that made the engine of Porco's airplane. Fiat is the company that made Lupin's tiny car in the castle of Cagliostro. You know that famous car of his. Fiat made that tiny car as well as this sturdy looking truck. And what's interesting about this scene is where Porco wildly turns his horizontally attached steering wheel of the truck. Because it's horizontal, Fio would only be able to drive by holding the lower part like this. But Porco is strong enough to give it a full turn like this. This depiction is fun to watch. And trucks back in the days... Um, had the steering wheels installed at this angle to give more space for the gears. Perhaps many modern trucks are designed similarly. Now, the windows. The upper half of the front window opens forward like this. This is common for large European cars. You can enjoy all these details during the broadcast for extra enjoyment. So definitely check them out when you watch the movie. Moving on, at 54 minutes in the DVD, in this scene, Porco's plane is flying over the Adriatic Sea. 
This is Fio. It's a scene where Porco is visiting Dina with his repaired airplane. The best description of his acting here is showing off. Porco flying in circles above Gina almost looks as if he's stirring her mind. His attention must be simple and pure. Look at my new airplane! Is it cool or what? Gina looks at the front seat and finds a girl. Then Gina frowns a little bit. It's also something to pay attention to. In the middle of a scene where they head to the hotel, Fio turns around to talk to Porco. Here you see the sighting device to aim at targets. It's a telescopic type. So when you look at the lens right here, you're looking into the lens reversely. So you see Fio's tiny face inside. Every time Fio talks or sticks her head out from the seat, you can see small Fio inside the lens move accordingly. Simply put, it looks cute. It's after 54 minutes on the DVD, or maybe an hour on the TV broadcast. So all of you remember, when the time comes, don't miss cute Fio sticking her head out from the seat as well as small Fio moving inside the sighting device lens. After this scene, Porco takes Fio to his hideout. At the hideout, he is confronted by the pirates with his rival Curtis. There, Porco and Curtis agree to have a return match. This is the scene on that night where Porco is selecting the machine gun bullets. When Fio wakes up in the middle of the night, she finds Porco turning back into a human. One hour and five minutes have passed on the DVD. Now, there's a solid reason why Porco turns back into a human here. Uh, how should I say? Porco Rosso is a hard movie to figure out. If you ask yourself, why is Porco a pig? Because the movie doesn't give many clues. It's easier to understand the movie if you pay attention to when he turns back into a human. For this scene, I will spend more time in Sunday's lecture discussing the other scenes in relation to this in depth. For now, I'll just talk about this particular scene, and I just need you to remember that he's turned back into a human here. What you should know before you watch the TV broadcast is what happens right after that. It's at the one hour and five minutes mark on DVD. You see Porco carefully selecting the bullets. He chooses them one by one and aligns them on the table. What this scene tells us is that, as I've already told you, he only wants to take 20 machine gun bullets because he doesn't want to take any more than the minimum number of shots, which is 20. That's why he investigates every single bullet carefully, making sure there's none that's rusted or has wet gunpowder inside. Here, he's already selected 18 bullets. The neatly aligned bullets on the table indicate how carefully chosen they are. As usual, he is planning to win the match with 20 bullets. Now, count these bullets in this image. You see 19 bullets there, which means he's now on to the last bullet. Porco is wondering which one to choose. Then suddenly, Fio comes and gives a goodnight kiss to Porco. Porco tries to act cool, but as she kisses him, his face turns red and he panics. This event actually foreshadows what happens to Porco at the dogfight in the climax scene. He will put himself in the biggest danger in the movie because of this. I told you earlier that the relationship between Porco and Fio at the hideout would lead to the major climax at the end. This is it. So, actually, I'm not done yet. So, while he is choosing the last bullet, he gets kissed and becomes distracted. After that, there's the dogfight between Porco and Curtis. Uh, one hour and 19 minutes on DVD. It's almost at the end because the entire movie is 90 minutes long. Porco has targeted Curtis. Now, he's ready to shoot his machine gun. He pulls the trigger, but the bullet doesn't come out. The trigger makes a clicky noise. Porco notices something is wrong and starts panicking. He confirms that the machine gun doesn't shoot any bullet. 
He says, it got stuck and anxiously pulls the lever multiple times, but it doesn't do any good. Guess why this happens? This is the result of that kiss in the hideout. Porco's machine guns are made in Germany. German machine guns designed for airplanes back then came with fabric ammo belts that looked like a bandage with many pockets. Each bullet goes into a pocket. In a land battle, soldiers can directly touch the gun to clear the jam. But when it comes to airplane guns, especially the one on Porco's plane, is attached at the far front. So all Porco can do is to pull the trigger many times or discharge empty cartridges by pulling or pushing the lever. That means if even one bullet gets stuck, he has to give up the rest of the fight. Porco chose his bullet so carefully to prevent that from happening. But that kiss, when he was choosing the last bullet, it made Porco panic. He couldn't keep his calm. So he ended up choosing one dud bullet. That's why the bullet got stuck. After that, Porco gives up the dogfight with Curtis. At last, both Porco and Curtis land their planes and end up having a major fist fight to finish the match. About the foreshadowing, Miyazaki must have been having so much fun hinting to us. You see 19 bullets on the table? I directed the drawing particularly so you can count each bullet. I made it so obvious for you. Look, I placed them carefully so you can count them one by one in the theater. Oh, there you go. The last bullet got stuck. And you know the reason why. But I researched different websites and read theories that people made to give analysis on the truth about Porco Rosso. But nobody mentioned this. I'd say it's Miyazaki's fault. He's playing a joke, which is a bit too much. But what fascinates me about Miyazaki is that he sets this type of obvious foreshadowing in the movie. But Miyazaki specifically mentioned that he had set middle-aged adults as the target audience. So, if you are still young, wait until you become middle-aged. Then you can truly appreciate Miyazaki's humor, which he hid in the movie. I guess this is about it for the preview. Now, please enjoy Porco Rosso on TV. And come back on Sunday to watch my main lecture on Porco Rosso, where I will talk about how Porco Rosso is a movie for middle-aged men. Okay, bye-bye.